Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ble good and blessed uh, evening to all our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, to all who are tuning in right now, as well as to all the people, to all the brethren who will be tuning in at a later times. Um, wow, that was an awesome worship. And can I invite, can I encourage each and every one of us to remain in the attitude of worship. The Lord is not finished yet. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Uh, can I invite each and every one to just be in the presence of the Lord? Just bow down and just be in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is not yet finished. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Majesty. Majesty. Oh, majesty. Your majesty. Our Savior. Our Lord. Our King. Your majesty. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, your majesty. Your grace. Majesty has found us just as we are tonight. You have just found us tonight in the midst of our needs. You have just found us tonight in the need, in the midst of our longing. So majesty, we are coming to you. And majesty, we are asking from you. Yes, majesty, to change us. Majesty, to move us. Majesty, to move in our midst. Hallelujah. Your majesty, change us. Change us, O oh majesty. Change us that we will never be the same again. Your majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your majesty, our Savior, our Lord, our God, our King, our Father, Jesus, with the company of the Holy Spirit, we humble down and we bow down to you tonight. And thank you very much for gathering us. Thank you very much for gathering us in fellowship. Thank you that there is a day such as today. Thanks God, it's Friday, where we are having this wonderful opportunity and privilege, oh God, to just to come to you, to commune with you, to fellowship with one another, Father, to lift your name up high, oh Lord, through praise and worship and through study of your words. Lord, even as we continue tonight, we pray, Father God, that you uphold whatever prejudices that we may have. And Father God, we pray that in spite of our pain, in spite, Father God, of whatever trials, whatever situations that we are in, whatever down moment that we are in, whatever depressing situations that we are in, individually or corporately, as a family, as a body, oh Lord God, we humble ourselves down and we concentrate to you. Indeed, Lord, just like your servant says, give us a receptive heart that will enable us, Father, to receive anything and everything that you have in store for us tonight. And we thank you so much, Lord. We entrust your words unto you. Bless your for the quickening spirit to be upon people right now who are tuning in, to be upon people at a later times when they tune in, Father God, to your words. Father, we are going to be talking tonight regarding quite a trivial word, Father God, a, a, a matter, Father God, that is debatable both within the Christian institution and even outside father god so lord we pray that you give us a clear mind we you give us a clear heart father that lord we are not going to be representing our own thoughts we are not going to be representing our own prejudices we are not going to be representing or talking about our own knowledge or understanding father god we will be guided and we will draw our study in your words, 
Whatever your word says, Father. Whatever your Bible says, Father God. So Lord, therefore, I pray that you be with us and help us understand and help us study your words, Father. Lord, as for your servant, I humble myself down. And Father God, Lord, I offer this moment unto you, Lord, for apart from you, I cannot operate. Apart from you, I cannot do anything. Hide me behind you. Hide me within your shadow, Father, that there is no hint of me that these people tuning in, Father, will be considering. Father, they will not be considering my voice. They will not be considering my facade. They will not be considering who am, who am I, Father. But what we are considering is who you are, O oh God. And we thank you so much, Father, in advance. We thank you for the learning that you are going to give us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And yes, thank you very much for the life of uh, uh, Brother Kenneth and Sister Cherry for leading us into that truly indeed majestic praise in worship tonight. Thank you very much that in spite of uh, what is happening around, that um, they prioritize the Lord. So I just speak blessing upon the life of Brother Kenneth and Sister Cherry and to all the Pineda household as they have uh, used, as they have offered their household tonight for the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. So my dear brothers and sisters, um, we are going to be talking about why, why Christians should not celebrate Halloween. And we know that Halloween is around the corner. Amen? We know that Halloween is around the corner. So if I am going to ask you the question that what are your thoughts about Halloween? Amen? Are you preparing for this Halloween? Are you excited for this Halloween? Have you been invited to a, a party Halloween theme? Have you already bought, have you already purchased your costume, your Halloween costume or your children's costume? Have you been contemplating who will you gonna be this year in Halloween? So my dear brothers and sisters, have you decorated your lawn yet? Have you bought the things that you would be needing? Have you bought those um, uh, pumpkins? Amen. Few weeks ago, pumpkins already have flocked the store. So have you made sure that you were able to buy the best pumpkin in there? Have you, were you able to buy the biggest pumpkin in there, the best um, deal pumpkin in there? But my dear brothers and sisters, tonight we are going to be talking why as a Christian believer, we are going to be talking why as a Christian we should not be celebrating a Halloween. And I know that some people already probably are smirking some probably people already are murmuring some people probably are already unsettled and probably even these statements are not welcome but again my dear brothers and sisters open your heart just let the lord open your heart just let the lord open our mind just welcome that receptive spirit from the lord because my dear brothers and sisters None of this that I am going to be talking about is my own personal prejudices. None of this that I am going to be talking about, none, I'm not going to be conveying my thoughts regarding this. We are going to be talking about the word of the Lord. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. What is the thought of the Lord? What are the thoughts of God? with regards to this Halloween, with regards to this festival and similar like it, my dear brothers and sisters. And I want to start by saying that Halloween is a worldly festival. That's if you can, if you look at your screen, I underline the word worldly. No? So Halloween is a worldly festival that separate the godly people. That separate the godly Christians, separate the godly parents from the ungodly. 
although I appreciate that all of us wants to associate ourselves to be Christians. All of us wants to be associated as a godly Christians or a godly parents. But my dear brothers and sisters, talking about this Halloween and reflecting other similar festivals that comes with it, my dear brothers and sisters, by that alone, we can self-reflect if we are indeed Christians, if we are indeed godly Christians, if we are indeed godly parents, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? So, I understand, I underline the word wordly in there. And I really do apologize. I am sorry, but I am not going to mince my words just to be mediocre, just to be appealing, just to be acceptable. But if you take down, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says in there that Satan is the God of this world. Satan is the God of this age. Which means, my dear brothers and sisters, that Satan holds a major influence upon the ideals. Satan holds the major influence upon the opinions. Satan holds a major influence upon the goals, upon the plans, upon the desire, upon the wants, upon the hopes upon the views of majority of people in this world. So my dear brothers and sisters, the true godly people, the true godly Christians, we are minority in this world. Although it says that Christianity is the largest religious faith in the world, but the true godly Christian, my dear brothers and sisters, we are a minority. So when I say Halloween is a worldly festival basing on 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, what I really mean, my dear brothers and sisters, is without mincing any words, Halloween is a satanic or a demonic festival, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? And I just want to show you, um, I just want to, Show us, my dear brothers and sisters, um, some examples of the way how we celebrate Halloween. Amen. I just want to show us the way how we celebrate Halloween. I just want to show us the way how we decorate Halloween. So if you look at the left corner, it would appear that um, this is one of the most affluent uh, area in the United States. And you can see even the rich, how they celebrate Halloween, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So even in the right, the not so affluent family, you can see how they celebrate Halloween. Amen. And then far down, you can see as well in there, uh, there is your favorite pumpkins. Amen. And if you look at in the middle, wow, there is a, a cute, lovely baby dressed in a, uh, in a, a baby the devil amen if you look at your far down right you can see a family dressed in a demonic and a satanic family and i think everyone can reflect on this one if you take down note i just uh, blinded uh the eyes of a uh, few people in here just to kind of protect their identity but rest assured my dear brothers and sisters that this is widely available in the internet so we are not breaking any privacy or any uh, dignity in here my dear brothers and sisters amen so i just want to show for us for the purpose of illustration how does people celebrate halloween and at some point in time or we are probably planning as well to be in one way or another celebrate in the same way but my dear brothers and sisters make no mistake amen make no mistake as we study the word of the lord tonight let us make no mistake amen so i just want us i just want to give a little bit of overview of the history of halloween amen so i am not going to 
uh, discuss an in-depth detail of Halloween because our topic is not Halloween. Our topic is why, as a Christian, we should not be celebrating a Halloween. So this is just really a superficial uh, history of Halloween. So my dear brothers and sisters, we can see that Halloween is an ancient pagan festival that originated in Europe or the old Europe originated during the time of the Celts. Amen? And we know that Europe spread all throughout the world. Europe went to the Americas. Amen? They discovered America, Christopher Columbus. Amen? In Europe, they went to Asia and colonized countries in Asia. Europe went to the Middle East to colonize countries in the Middle East. So we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that although this Halloween ancient pagan festival originated during the old Europe or the time of Celts, but they have scattered all the four corners of the world. Amen? And how do people celebrate this festival? Me, people make sacrifices to their God who is called Samhain. And Samhain, my dear brothers and sisters, is the God of death. And they offer sacrifices to the priest of Samhain or called Druids. So these are the sorcerers, these are the enchanters, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And during this time, uh, this is also accordingly, my dear brothers and sisters, these are accordingly the favorite time of the witches because this is the moment where witches and their practices are strongest. This is accordingly, my dear brothers and sisters, the favorite time, amen, this is accordingly the best time for uh, 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 the practices, my dear brothers and sisters, people who are practicing witchcraft, people who are practicing black magic, because this is the time where they apparently can speak to the dead, my dear brothers and sisters, amen. This is accordingly the best time for evil spirits to roam around, Amen. And what does people do? Because of this evil spirit roaming around, what people do is they disguise themselves as evil spirit in order to be spared from the attack of this evil spirit. In order to look like evil spirits too and to be spared from the attack of this evil spirit. Amen. And we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that as Christianity is spread through Europe, amen, as Christianity spread through Europe, particularly the Roman Catholicism, it came into conflict with these indigenous pagan rituals and belief. Amen. As Christianity is spreading across Europe, there is a conflict between Christianity and there is a conflict between these pagan beliefs and pagan practices. Amen? So, makikita natin that though people are starting to convert into Christianity, but they cannot give up these pagan practices. They cannot give us, give up these pagan beliefs. No, They still hold a stronghold in their system. But that is the reason why it's called a stronghold because you cannot easily get rid of that. You cannot easily remove that, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? So, what did the old Christianity did? Amen? What did the old Roman Catholicism did to best gain converts is they Christianize these pagan practices and beliefs. They add Christian symbols and practices with it. No, They add the cross, they add a little prayer on it, and they rebranded it. They called it All Hallows Eve or Hallow means uh, Hallow means holy and Eve means night. So the night of the holy people, they rebranded it 
my dear brothers and sisters. And we can see these practices now. Even many churches now, my dear brothers and sisters, if you look at churches across the globe, that's what they do. Amen? It is not just these pagan practices in belief. Even now, my dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of uh, practices that are being Christianized and being rebranded just to uh, to make appear like it's acceptable. No, so for example, this prosperity gospel, for example, this Christian group that are very tolerant, meaning they tolerate everything, they tolerate all wrongdoings, they tolerate all wrong practices as long as people come to the church. They tolerate sin. They tolerate shortcomings as long as it makes people active in the church ministry. So my dear brothers and sisters, no, it should not be like that. Because we can now see with this Halloween that exactly what happened. A pagan practice, amen, a pagan practice that was Christianized symbols and uh, uh, some practices was added to it and they rebrand it and they call it a Christian tradition. But my dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you to open your Bible from the beginning until the end and it is nowhere in there that you can find anything that relates or anything that pertains to all Saints Day or anything that pertains to All Hallows Eve or Halloween. My dear brothers and sisters, this is an ancient pagan satanic demonic festival that the church adopted in order to gain converts in which it should not be like that, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So the question now, my dear brothers and sisters, that I want to ask is, I am not going to ask if, as a Christian, would it be acceptable to observe Halloween or All Hallows Eve? I am not going to ask that question. What I am saying as today is I am categorically saying as a Christian, we should not celebrate Halloween, my dear brothers and sisters. As a worldly and God, as a godly Christian, as a godly parents, let us not involve our children in observing or celebrating this Halloween or All Hallows Eve, my dear brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, it says in there that you are the light of the world. So the Bible, the gospel is talking to the believers. And if you are a believer, if you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, if you claim to be a Christian, then this mandate is for you. This word is for you. And it says in there that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a Christian, as a believer in the Lord, we are called the light of the world. And as a believer, amen, the intention of the Lord for us is to keep our being a Christian, to keep our being a believer secret. But my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord called us to believe in Him in order that He may set us apart. In order that He may set us up in a lampstand. That is saying, my dear brothers and sisters, that 
in order for our life, in order for the faith that we receive, in which that faith is the light of the world, in which no other than Jesus may shine upon all, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So what the Lord is telling us in here is as a Christian, as a godly believer, as a godly parent, we should correct, we should convict, we should be an example. We should not just be an example, but let us correct the system. Let us correct whatever it is that we are into. Let us correct the notion in our family that Halloween is acceptable. Let us correct the notion in our neighborhood that Halloween is accepted. Let us correct the notion in the community that we are part in that Halloween is expected. Let us be there like the light of the world saying, as a Christian, we should not be celebrating Halloween, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. I want to show you a statement, a research statement. This statement came from Anton Levy. Amen? And who is Anton Levy? Anton Levy is the founder of the Church of Satan. No? But we know that he has now went to join Satan in the afterlife because he's already deceased. But Anton Levy is the founder of the Church of Satan. And in his statement, pay attention, this is a statement of Anton Levy, who is a satanic, demonic, he is the founder of the Church of Satan. He says in there that by dressing up, either wearing a costume or coloring oneself for Halloween, it is tantamount to worshiping the devil. It signifies that you allow Satan to own you. Amen. I hope that we understand that. Anton Levy, who is satanic and demonic and the founder of the church of Satan himself, acknowledged saying that if you dress up, if you dress up, by wearing, if you dress up, if you put a costume, if you color yourself for Halloween, this is tantamount to worshiping the devil. Meaning, he means that you are worshiping the devil if you do this. If you do this, it means that you are allowing Satan to own you up. No, He further say that when you adapt, these pagan practices, you subconsciously dedicate yourself to the devil. No? You probably say, no, I am not doing that. That is not my purpose. You probably disagree and argue that, no, I know in my heart that I am not doing that. I know in my heart that uh, that is not my purpose. I know in my heart that, that is, this is just a pure and simple, innocent wearing costume, innocent painting myself, innocent putting costume for Halloween. But he says that even if you don't know, even if you claim innocently that that is not your purpose, he said that subconsciously you are dedicating yourself to the devil. No, So he took joy in Christians in particular. Amen. Who partake in the tradition. He took joy. He is very happy for Christians who partake in this tradition saying that I am glad that Christians and parents let their children or Christians observe or they let their children worship the devil, at least the devil at least one night in a year. So he said, welcome to Halloween. By how? Because even subconsciously, even innocently, we wear costume, we color ourselves for Halloween, and even with most innocent intention, the man himself says that that is tantamount 
to worshiping the devil. That is tantamount to allowing Satan to own you. That is tantamount to subconsciously dedicating yourself to Satan, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And Pastor John Ramirez confirmed this as well. Amen. Pastor John Ramirez is quite famous actually. He is a former Satanist. He is a former believer in Satan, but has now turned to be the pastor of the Lord. And even him, in his statement, he said that when you dress up, even as an angel, even as a mermaid for Halloween, take note, even if you dress up as an angel, even if you dress up as an innocent character for Halloween, you give the devil the legal rights to change your identity. Amen. Even if you say that I am a Christian, I am a believer in the Lord, Jesus owned me, but he said that even if you subconsciously put a costume, paint your face, observe Halloween, you are actually telling the devil you're giving a privilege for the devil to change your identity. And he said further that I warned all that there is a much darker reality in Halloween beyond costumes and candies. Amen. In the physical eye, that's the reason why the word of the Lord says that the God of this world, in which no other than Satan, he blinded the minds and the eyes of the people so that they cannot see the light, the glory of the gospel of Christ. Because in our simple eye, we can only see costume. We can only see treats, candies. But these people themselves say that there is darker reality in it. Amen. Our battle is not against the costume, it's not against the candy. Our battle is the darker reality on this Halloween. Our battle is not against flesh or blood, but spirit, demonic principalities, enforces in heavenly places, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So, what is that telling us? That is telling us, my dear brothers and sisters, that as a Christian, we should not celebrate Halloween. As a Christian, I pray and I hope, I believe by faith, that last year's Halloween was your last one and you will never ever participate. You will never ever allow your children. You will never ever allow your household to participate, to celebrate in a Halloween or anything that associated with these pagan festivals and practices, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? John chapter 1, verse 4, it says in here that in Him was light. Amen? In Him was light. In Christ was life. In the life was the light of all men. Amen? So in Christ was life. When we received the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we became Christian. Amen? And as now we are a Christian, it says in there that in that faith, there is where the light of man is. In Him was life. In Christ is life. And in Christ is the light of man. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. John 8, 12, it says in there, I am the light of the world. No, this is Jesus talking to us. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. Because Jesus is the life of life, we receive him. So when we receive him, we have the light of life. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And Jesus said that he is 
the light of the world. And when we follow Him, we will no longer walk in darkness. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So these passages, these passages ang sinasabi po sa atin, these passages is telling us that God is the God of life. God is the God of life. Amen. And we know that Halloween focuses in death because Halloween originally is in honor of Samhain, the God of death. We know that our God, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ is the God of life. He is the light of the world. God is a God of light. And Samhain, the author of this pagan practice is the God of death. So my dear brothers and sisters, amen. If you have the God of life, how can you celebrate something? In relation to death. So it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, if you continue to do that, amen, let us put aside the work of darkness and put on the armor of light. And uh, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, no? No? It says in there that if people who are listening People who are listening, let us make no mistake. Let us not participate with anything that has something to do with Halloween. Amen. Because if we do that, the word of the Lord himself will judge us. The Lord will himself judge us. And the Lord will call us evil. Because John 3.19, it says in there that this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So, maski tinanggap natin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo at sinabi natin na Kristiyano tayo, na believer tayo, na mananampalataya tayo, but if we continue to practice the practices, the tradition, of this world based on darkness and one of them is this Halloween, the word of the Lord says that you still remain evil. Amen. So you don't want to be branded evil Christian. Amen. This did not came from me. It is the word of the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Romans 13, 12. It says in there that the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the work of darkness and put on the armor of light. Amen. What is that telling us? The night is nearly over, my dear brothers and sisters. That means that the kingdom of this world is nearly over. We are in the end times, remember? And who will come in the end times? Jesus Christ, our Savior and Master, will return in the end times. So it says in here that the time of the God of this world is nearly over. The day is almost here. Jesus is almost coming. So it is encouraging us to put aside the work of darkness and put the armor of light, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. The work of darkness, the satanic work, the work of darkness, this festival, these practices that has no biblical implication in origin, that has only satanic and pagan in origin, just like this Halloween. Make no mistake, my dear brothers and sisters. 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says in there, Don't team up with those who are unbelievers? How can righteousness be partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? My dear brothers and sisters, this is telling us to be conscious about what we are doing. 
We know that again, Halloween and other festivals similar to it is a pagan belief, is a pagan practice. It has no biblical foundation. How can we team up with it? How can we celebrate it? How can we welcome it in our midst near us? Amen. You as the child of God has been made righteous. How can you partner with wickedness? You as the child of light receiving light himself, who is Jesus, how can you return back to darkness? Such as practice like Halloween, my dear brothers and sisters. And for Christian, this is telling us as well to be aware, to be conscious. If you are single, to be conscious of who you are courting, who you are meeting, who you are marrying. If you are Christian, if you are a believer, be conscious of who you are befriending with. My dear brothers and sisters, make no mistake. My dear brothers and sisters, amen. How can we live in darkness, darkness, if we receive the gospel of the Lord? How can we live in darkness if we receive the light of the Lord? Amen. If celebrating a dark holiday, something that a child of light should be doing, as a child of light, as a Christian, is celebrating a dark festival like Halloween is something that a child of God is supposed to be doing? Is something that a child of light is supposed to be doing? My dear brothers and sisters, I have an example in here. If you or someone you know or if someone suffered from fear, suffered from panic attack, suffered from anxiety, suffered from depression, and they have been delivered, they have been cured, should they participate in a festival that has fear, that has panic attack, that has depression, that has anxiety to the very foundation of it? No. You will avoid it. You will run away from it. So as a child of light, as a Christian, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ who were called out of the dark in the Lord's marvelous light, 1 Peter 2.9, it says in there, how can you celebrate a festival has darkness on the very foundation of it? You should not. We should not. We cannot, my dear brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 13, it says in there, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in fire, who practices divination or sorcery, who interprets omen, who engages in witchcraft, who engages in casting spell, or who is a medium or a spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is, pay attention, I highlighted in there, it is detestable to the Lord. The Lord hates this race in a hundred degree. Amen. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. And it went on to say, you must be blameless before the Lord your God. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. In the history, we have established that this Halloween and other festival and other pagan festival similar to it, we have established, my dear brothers and sisters, that their foundations is the practices that involves divination in sorcery, interpretation of omen, engaging in witchcraft, casting spells, 
medium, occults, and spiritists, consulting the dead. My dear brothers and sisters, these practices are clearly detestable to the Lord. The Lord hates this. And we should not be doing these things that glorify these practices. Amen. It should be detestable to us as well. Halloween should be detestable to us as well, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Hindi natin pwedeng irason. We cannot reason out and say na my friend just asked me to accompany her. No. Hindi natin pwedeng irison out na sabihin na nagpasama lang ang kaibigan ko para mamili sa shop ng costume or nagpabili lang ang kaibigan ko sa Amazon, sa eBay kasi wala silang account. No? Nagpabili lang ang kaibigan ko ng pumpkin kasi hindi siya makaka-drive, hindi siya makakapunta doon. No? Pinapaukit lang ng kapitbahay ko itong pumpkin na to para sa kanya ito, hindi para sa akin. Or hindi magbibigay lang ako ng candy sa mga kumakatok para walang masabi ang aking mga kaibigan, baka ang aking mga kapitbahay rather, baka sabihin nila na kill joy ako. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian and the Lord finds this detestable, this should be detestable in our eyes as well. Amen. Halloween is a sacred high holidays for the weekends. Weekends, this is the religion of the witches. People who practice witchcraft. No? If this is the holiday of the weekends, should Christians celebrating it on the same day? It should not. You must be blameless before the Lord your God, it says in verse 13. If you are a Christian, you should be blameless before the Lord our God, my dear brothers and sisters. No? Is it cute when we dress ourselves? Is it cute when we dress our children like the devil? A witches? A ghost, a ghost, a scary things, or any other characters? It is not cute, my dear brothers and sisters. It is well demonic and it is detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Pastor, what if I or my children dresses in a wholesome fireman costume what if i or my children dresses in a doctor in a batman in a wonder woman wholesome costume would that be possible romans 16 19 it says in there that for your obedience is known to all so that i rejoice over you Amen? So it says that if our obedience in the Lord is known to all, if we obey the Lord from single dot unto the big structure, the Lord says that I acknowledge you. I rejoice over you. But it says in there, I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is good evil. Amen. So malinaw po dito mga kapatid. Amen. Malinaw po dito that if I participate, no? Malinaw po dito that we need to be wise. Amen. Even to dress up in like a wholesome or innocent figure, my dear brothers and sisters. Or if we let our children do that, no? What are we conveying to them? Are we not sending a mixed message, no? By participating 
or allowing ourselves, allowing our children to participate in a celebration of the festival, satanic festival, pagan festival of Halloween, even if we say that as a doctor, as a fireman, as a superhero. No? In 2 Corinthians 6.17, it says in there, contrary to that, the Lord says, Come out from among them and be separated. Thus saith God. Touch no unclean things and I will receive you. Amen. So malinaw po, mga kapatid. Amen. That let us not do that. Even least to say that putting yourself in a situation that in a wholesome costume, in an innocent costume, the word of the Lord says that let us be wise and let us be innocent according to this pagan satanic practices in rituals. Come out from among them. Come out from the world. That's what the Lord says. This is the practice of the world. This is what the world does. No? If you see the shops, all Halloween stuff, this is the practice of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying, our God is saying, come out from the world. Amen. Separate yourself from the world. Touch no unclean things. And I will receive you. Amen. The word of the Lord time and time again. In the Old Testament, the Lord told us that we are peculiar people. And when the Lord says that He has chosen us in Him to be a peculiar people, the Lord means that we need to be distinct from the world. We need to be different from the world, from the world norms, from the world practices in customs, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. We need to be different from them. We need to come out from them. We need to touch or partake of anything from them, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. How about if there are questions where we say that my friends, my colleagues, my neighbors, and other people thinks that I am killjoy. They think that it is ridiculous that I or I do not allow my children to dress up or participate for Halloween. Amen. How do we answer them? How do we answer them? My dear brothers and sisters, we do not need to answer them. Should their opinion matters more than what God says in His words? Let's, let us not give in to the pressure of this world. They do not matter. Their opinion do not matter. For me, personally, their opinion do not matter. What they think, what they say, do not matter. This person is like, it doesn't matter as long as I know that everything that I stand is based on this strong foundation. The word of the Lord in which no other than Jesus Christ Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. My business is not to listen to them. My business is not to be pressurized by them. My business is what is pleasing to God. That is my utmost concern and that is my only concern. Amen. So if there is even a question if there is a question or doubt in your mind that is what I am doing wrong? Is listening to these people wrong? What they are saying is good and sounds reasonable, but if you have doubt in your mind that is it even right that something is wrong, that should be your first clue. Amen? 
Why should I continue to do something that at the back of my mind, it seems weak? Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, make no mistake, I pray and I hope by faith that last Halloween was it, was your last one. And we will never, ever, ever participate. Amen. Deuteronomy. No? Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says in here that the secret things belongs to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever so that we may follow all the words of the law. Amen. So, mga kapatid, no? Napaka, napaka linaw po dito. It says in there that the secret things belongs to the Lord our God. Amen. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children's forever that we may follow all the words of this law. My dear brothers and sisters, the secret is already there. If you did not know yet that this is Halloween prior to tonight, it is not a secret anymore. It's been revealed to us tonight by the Holy Spirit. And because it's been revealed to us tonight, it belongs to us and it belongs to our children forever. And it was revealed to us so that we will follow it, so that we will pay attention, so that we will observe and apply it. Amen? Second Peter 1.20 Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scriptures comes from one's own interpretation. Amen. This is not subject to your own interpretation, to my own interpretation. This is not subject where people will say, brother, sister, pastor, I don't think that this is what it meant. This is my own interpretation. This is what my own understanding is. If you have been closely paying attention, I have quoted those directly from the word of the Lord. None of those came from my own interpretation. Amen. So make no mistake, my dear brothers and sisters. I am not forwarding, I am not putting forward my own thoughts and understanding, my own interpretation. No, I am just a resonating speaker. Amen. I am just an instrument that the word of God, I am just vocalizing it. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So the question does Halloween bring glory to God? It does not. No. Amen. Look at this. No. My costume is a cute, which innocent, which, or my family's costume last year or this year is, uh, what is this again? The, um, the Incredibles family. And it's innocent. It's a superhero. Or in here, I dress up my child or my baby in an innocent devil or as a family, we, we went like this. Father, uh, brothers and sisters, look at that. If that is how Halloween, does it bring glory to God? Where is the picture of God in there? Where is a passage in there that says that this reflects God? No. There is nothing on in that picture. In this picture, my dear brothers and sisters, these are the usual costumes of people celebrating Halloween. So does Halloween bring glory to God? The answer is resounding no. Halloween glorifies the devil. There is no need to say more. There is no need to explain more. Amen. Halloween is setting aside a day to celebrate evil according to that uh, Anton Levy. Amen. 
according to that founder of the church of Satan, setting aside a day to celebrate evil, to celebrate darkness, to celebrate witchcraft, to celebrate fear, to celebrate death, and to celebrate demonic beings. Amen? And if you do that, if you observe that, if you observe, if you partake and participate to Halloween, it says in there, it is disdain to God. Amen? Period. No more explanation. Amen? Disdain means more severe than disrespect to God. So next time, that you consider, you contemplate to participate in Halloween at the back of your mind, at the back of your conscience, after receiving the Lord. It says in there, you are disrespecting God. Period. Wala na pong ibang explanation. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, what do we do on Halloween? Amen? So what do we do instead on Halloween? No? So what do I do on Halloween? Do I turn my lights off? Amen? I think we did that in the past. When Halloween comes, trick or treat, we turn the light off para magmukhang walang tao sa bahay. Or do we hide? Magtago tayo. Amen? Or do we not open the door? Gaano man kalakas ang kanilang katok? Or do we take the family out of the house? Lumabas muna tayo, bumalik na lang tayo mamaya. Is that what we ought to do? No, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? If that's what you have been doing, you are handing the enemy victory. Amen? Where does your light Shine the brightest according to the word of God in the darkness. Amen. Halloween is a dark festival. So as the light of the world, amen, as the light of the world, Halloween is a dark festival. And as a light of the world, as a Christian, we should shine the brightest when it is dark. Amen. So what do we do? Amen? It says in there, Halloween is not one day in the year when your neighbors come to your door expecting to receive something. So give them Jesus instead. Amen? Imagine if it's not Halloween, you struggle to talk to your neighbor. If it's not Halloween, you struggle to say hi to your neighbor. You probably say hi to your neighbor. You probably say hello to your neighbor. And you will be point blank. As if they did not see anything. As if they did not know you. But when Halloween comes, your neighbor comes to your door. Is that not a wonderful opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. To share the word of the Lord. Is that not a wonderful opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters, for evangelism? Amen. Your neighbor is coming to the door expecting to receive treats or something from you, then give them Jesus. Amen. Rather than treat, give glory to God and give a black eye to the devil by how reaching out to your neighbor with the gospel of Christ. Let's bring the battle to the gates of hell. Thus saith God. Amen. That in the strongest time of the devil, we are there. We are ready waging war against him, against his cohorts, against his practices, against his tradition, against this pagan belief that even shook the core of so-called Christianity. My dear brothers and sisters, amen. The word of the Lord, you are the light of the world. Amen. And as the light of the world, we must 
shine light before others. Amen? That they may see the good deeds of the body of Christ, that they may glorify your heavenly Father. It is sad to say that this satanic, demonic, pagan practices has been adopted in order for Christianity to grow, in order for Christianity to develop. That is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that at the end of times, the Lord says, not everyone who professes to be Christian will be able to enter the kingdom of God. My dear brothers and sisters, celebrating this Halloween and similar festival that has no scriptural and biblical foundations, but purely satanic, demonic, and pagan practices in origin, no matter how it was being rebranded, no matter what symbol is placed in there, no matter what uh, practice Christian was placed in there, my dear brothers and sisters, make no mistake. The word of the Lord says, touch no unclean things. Be not a participant of unclean things. You should be innocent from all of this. Thus saith God. I cannot give emphasis enough, my dear brothers and sisters. I don't care. My colleagues, my neighbors, my friend, I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if I become I become uh, I become obscure in your hand. But to be honest, with all due respect to you, with all due respect to everybody, when it comes to the word of God, I do not really need your thoughts. I do not really need what do you think about it. As long as I know, I'm standing and holding on to the word of God. I am the light of the world. I am a light of the world, should I say. The light of the world is Jesus. And as receiving Jesus, I became a light of the world. And you do too. And as a light of the world, you should shine your light in order for everyone to say it. And what better day to show that if not during this festival of darkness called Halloween. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us stop justifying why it is fine or okay to celebrate this worldly, demonic, and satanic festival. Let us stop justifying. Let us stop saying that, no, oh, this is an innocent celebration in act. Let us not be muddled with our words. Let there be no gray lines and muddled areas about it. For the end time in this series, in this study, I want to give emphasis that a committed follower of Jesus Christ, as a godly Christian, as a godly parents, we should not celebrate Halloween. We should not allow our children to participate in anything that has to do with Halloween. Let us not allow our house to be tainted with anything that has something to do with Halloween. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have any comments, if you want to comment in today's study, we will be putting in there a link and please follow and join us in our extended fellowship. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Father, thank you that you taught us tonight. Thank you, Father, that you have opened 
our eyes tonight. Thank you that you have revealed the meaning of your scriptures to us tonight, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that uh, this Halloween, this pagan practice of Halloween that has only satanic and demonic foundation and sad to say, the church, the old church, Father, has accommodated it, Father God, just to mince your word. Father God, we ask for forgiveness for those people who claim to start your faith and then they mince your word with the word, with the, this pagan, satanic, demonic practices. Father, have your mercy overflow and have your mercy overflow upon your body today. Thank you, Father, that like what you have said on the last days, Father God, you are going to open the eyes of your people. Your people will see dreams and will see vision. Your people will say your statutes. Your people will say your will see your words, O oh God. And we are privileged that tonight our eyes were open. And Father, we take this opportunity to ask for your forgiveness for those previous years that we have allowed ourselves participant to this satanic, demonic, and pagan practice of Halloween and other uh, festivals similar to it. Father, forgive us. We pray that that was it. Last year was the last one. And from here forth onward, thank you, Father, that we will hold on your words. Thank you, Father that we will not mince with your word. Thank you that there are no gray lines. There are no gray areas, mudded lines and mudded areas in our faith with you. Thank you, Father. Now, we do not procrastinate our faith in you. Help us to know more. Help us to find more about you. Help us to be strong in our faith with you. But most importantly, help us that that light that we received from you as you called us light and turned us to be your light, that that light will shine bright for all people to see. Thank you very much, Father God. I speak victory upon the lives of people who are struggling to receive this message, who are struggling to contemplate and understand this message, who are in them are still justifying why they need to celebrate or to participate. Father God, fall upon them right now. Holy Spirit, fall upon them right now and give them the full scope of your message. Convict them, Holy Spirit, with sin, with righteousness in judgment so that if they are still undecided, they will be able to decide now. Thank you, Father God. We continue to honor you. We continue to bless your name, Father. And even our extended fellowship, we offer it unto you for your glory, Father God. And people who tuned in with us, O oh God, online, people who are here nationally and internationally abroad, Father, we speak victory upon their lives. We speak the power, O oh God, of life upon their lives. We speak the power of deliverance the power of restoration, the power of your glory to be upon their lives through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us uh, in our extended fellowship. Watch out for the link. Amen. May God bless you all.